Um, oh, all your faces have got a very nice rosy red colour. Right, I think you'll probably be seeing quite a lot of red. Um, Mike Woods. Hello. Pete Davis. Hello. We're sort of going to talk about the, the value of design, but a sort of repurposing um, of design, which I think probably all, we all realise in the 21st century context that we really need to move forward and give a new definition to actually what design can achieve. It's a very small word, six letters, but it's a very plural thing as well. It has implications for every aspect of our lives. So the world has got lots and lots of good designers, but the demands of the 21st century require more than traditional designers can provide. That's about working as partners. All designers now work in teams. It's really important for us to do that. But we don't need design to be about not doing. We actually need to make that doing more purposeful, more relevant, and more powerful. So that's a lot of words, isn't it? So if I can condense that into a bit of a nutshell, what we try and do with our students at the moment is develop what we call design thinking. Design thinking has been around for about 15 years now. And what it enables people to do is to actually put gaps within the design process. And those gaps are about reflection. So not jumping to solutions too early, which has given us so many problems that we're encountering right now. So we produce gaps within our thinking of design process to enable us to actually develop solutions which are both engaging, useful, and beautiful. But design, like a lot of things, it faces an, an uncertain future. Um, and traditional design fields create artifacts, but new societal challenges, cultural values, technological opportunities, require new skills also. So it seems reasonable to assume we must create enduring curricula for design education that merge science, technology, art, and business with a sustainable and conscious view to creating new value and new values for the future. So here are some of the things that we've been working on recently. This is a project in China generated through the British Council where we, were, we took three students, took three master students of design to China for two weeks where we were given a task, task on arrival. I don't know if any of you saw the Kevin MacLeod um, upcycling of an aeroplane recently. Well, ours was as, as vast as that. In fact, the, the, the situation that we were encountered was that we had eight aircraft hangars full of waste materials that we were asked to upcycle into products and to generate new value from. Plymouth University actually won 75% of the prizes that were on offer during that two weeks. Um, here's a, a brief snapshot of the process we've been working on with Janet and her team. You heard about um, Janet's work earlier, but I want to talk not so much about the, the what, the outcome, but the how, how we're getting there. And this ties into this notion of design thinking. Um, collaboration is key to the future of design. Um, in this case, design <coughs> staff, uh, lecturing staff and students from 3D design collaborating with lecturing staff and students from nursing. Um, workshop processes to um, stimulate ideas. Where do the good ideas come from is what we've been focusing on. And using classic design thinking techniques like user-centered design, um, observation of people, observation of environments, observation of experiences, interviews as the stimulant to good ideas. Um, and having the good ideas is the important bit. <clears throat> this is a, a local partner that we worked with called Crumb Rubber in Plymouth. We took students to Dutch Design Week, which is the second most, the largest uh, design competition within Northern Europe. And basically what you see there is a, is a reasonably useful product made out of complete waste. We used crumb rubber, which is basically the last thing that uh, you arrive at from a car tyre. The students sort of had, were exposed to an international environment. We chose Holland because the new thinking technologies and societal changes within, des in the, within the design spectrum in Holland are second to none at the moment. So we wanted to expose us and our students to that environment. 
Here's a snapshot of a project um, that took us to London to challenge the Chartered Society of Designers and leading professional designers. We invited them to the CSD um, to talk with us and debate new ecologies, new economies of design. You can see more of the work from that outside, um, looking at formats for um, in vitro meat. In this case, um, who wouldn't want um, rhino jerky or golden eagle bites? There's interesting questions to answer there. And, and the last project really is about this solid wool. Um, please have a look at it on the on, on websites. It's a very interesting product. He's a guy that left us last year. He's from Buckfast Lee. What he did was went around and collect uh, wool, basically. He's now constructed a bioresin to mix with this wool, which allows new products, new technologies to develop around discarded wool. His, he was in Milan last week, and Conran Shop and Heels have actually taken a good proportion of his products. So we wish him every success. It's called Justin. Thank you. You will remember us, because coffee is now. <laughs>